All right, I think I'm ready to go. This is the Toronto Yomazikaron Yomatsumut Evening at BAYT. It's an annual three or so hour event packing in the solemn commemorative aspects of Yomazikaron and what's essentially a kickoff celebration for Yomatsumut. It's put together in partnership with Mizrahi Canada, B'nai Akiva Schools, Imuna of Toronto, and a number of other organizations that could generally be classified as Orthodox. For the uninitiated, Yomazikaron is the official day of remembrance in Israel for fallen soldiers and victims of terror, and Yomatsumut is the celebration of Israel's independence. Day. Saying Yom Hazikaron is a solemn day for Israel or Jews around the world is, frankly, an understatement. You'd be hard-pressed to find a Jew anywhere who hasn't been affected either directly or indirectly by the battles for survival that Israel and its people have had to fight over the years. All the more so for Israelis, Jewish, Muslim, Christian, or otherwise, who've personally lived through those battles and who live under the often daily threat of terrorism. And so, here in Toronto and in other Jewish communities around the world, we commemorate these days along with Israel. At this program, it all began with the afternoon prayer service. Everyone, men and women, young and old, taking part in the standard daily service, but no doubt with the well-being of Israel in the back of their minds. From there, things moved to an opening address from the program chair. You know, introducing the order of the evening, thanking everyone for coming, and the people who make it all possible, as well as introducing the evening speakers. That's David Shore, by the way. He's a good guy. Then things continued with the singing of O Canada and the lowering of the Israeli flag. The Orchaim Choir did a great job of the anthem. That was followed by a short speech by Rabbi Korobkin, which included a heartfelt message from the mother and grandmother of the Hankin family, Eitan and Naama, who were two of the first people murdered in the beginning of the latest round of attacks on Israeli Jews this past October. As if those words weren't enough to bring some of the room to tears, a montage of the wars Israel has been through came next, intermingled with footage and images of people who have been lost in those wars and to acts of terrorism. And then, Cantor Tzvi Kassman from Shari Shemaim went up and recited an emotional Kelmale Rachamim, the prayer for the dead, as the candle was lit for each of the wars and for those recently lost to terrorism. By that point, you could see how much it had all even gotten to him. Well, just listen. <laughs> The most notable act of commemoration for Yom Zikaron is the minute of silence. I know that it might not sound like much for us in North America, where many people just kind of take a few moments on Remembrance Day or Memorial Day to drop whatever we're doing while we're at work or at school. And we're lucky that for most of us, we're not so familiar with the effects or influence that war can have on people. But in Israel, where no generation has had the opportunity to grow up without knowing some kind of war, everything stops for that minute. The air raid sirens blare across the small country and everyone, in school, in work, and even people driving on packed highways, everyone stops. down their work or their shopping baskets or stop and get out of their cars and reflect. This year in Toronto, we had our own such moment of reflection as the memorial for Rabbi Yaakov Don played. He and his wife came from Israel in the early 2000s to teach at the Community Hebrew Academy of Toronto. I was even in their classes as a student myself. This past November, Rabbi Don was murdered during an attack on the West Bank town of Gush Etzion. He was caught in the fire of a Palestinian gunman who shot at cars stopped at an intersection. And that was it. The life of a wonderful, warm, caring family man and educator wiped out along with the resident of Hebron and 18-year-old American Ezra Schwartz, all in one day. The night continued on, and DJ Schneeweiss, Israel's Consul General to Toronto, took to the podium and began the transition from commemoration to celebration. But not without first mentioning the rather unique, if not somehow odd and rather Jewish way, in which the evening's events combine the sad and celebratory. The Israeli flag was once again raised, and we were treated with the Yom Hasmud address from Israeli President Ruven Rivlin. 
Things got a boost as the kids from the Neti Vodator Choir sang and danced, followed by a song-filled version of the evening prayer services, led by a new and, to say the least, energetic Israeli teacher. And then Rabbi Jeremy Gimple came up, a ball of energy, full of inspiring thoughts, some of which echoed DJ's words, and others which expanded upon them. A prayer for Peace for the State of Israel, Rabbi Ilan Mazur, and finally a beautiful rendition of Hatikva and the blowing of the shofar closed the night before it was time to party. Yeah, I definitely agree with the way Rabbi Gimple classified it, a roller coaster of emotions. You know, it was a great event. Being with your community, celebrating Israel together as one, or as much of one as you can fit in a venue that side. It's probably the next best thing to actually celebrating in Israel yourself. It's pretty amazing. 